if you could imagine it, someone else will be able to build it. That was a quote from Walt Disney. With a fashion designer mother and an engraver artist and engineer father, I grew up in a very creative environment. And since I was a kid, I would have, could envision a new toy, a new device of some sort, based on what was going to be my next adventure, and I'll try to build it using anything I could get my hands on, from Lego parts to disassembled toys I used to own. So I was four, and I wanted to build a spaceship to sit in and watch my favorite TV show, Cosmos, by Cal Sagan. Because when you're watching a TV show that explores the universe, it's much better if you have your own spaceship, right? <laughs> so luckily for me, my parents had just bought a new refrigerator, and the cardboard box it came in, it was perfect to do, uh, to do this. So the day before, in the middle of the living room, and under my mom's technical supervision, my dad and I started sketching on the walls, cutting doors, windows, and using parts of my other toys to make knobs, handles, propulsion systems, anything that was needed to make that spacecraft look like the real thing. I even had one of those little chairs that I turned into like a proper spiral chair, right? Uh, but the bottom line is when the daring complexity, daring the impossible, and designed to go beyond, hoping not only for something faster, better, and cheaper, but greater, it's part of humankind's intellectual DNA. We humans have designed and built our way out of caverns by facing many challenges. And we have we come so far. We have used our creativity to design everything that surrounds you today. Housing, construction, clothing, cooking methods, uh, tools, uh, everything. The reality is every time we break through one of those barriers, one of those impossible barriers, our life gets more complicated, and soon we wish for something else. Maybe a new phone will allow me to capture reality in a much better way. A new house to live a new dream. A new spacecraft to reach the unreachable. In essence, design, among many other things, is always driven by hope for something we didn't have before. If you're in the business of dealing with impossibles, there are many things you have to do, but the first of all, is to create a vision, a multidisciplinary vision, and a way of working there, a way to get there. During the Renaissance, uh, creative studios called re uh, ateliers uh, spread out all across Europe. In those studios, a master artist, engineer, or architect worked with uh, students and apprentices to make one-off unique art pieces that would push the, uh, let the, the state of the art of the craft. In those studios, it was not only important the challenge they were tackling, it was also how to do it. It's kind of like the saying about the journey and the destination. They're both important where you're dealing with impossibles. So as relevant as their style, it was their technique. And that marriage between the what and the how led to a lot of innovation during that time. A couple of years ago, I had a chance to bring this concept of atelier to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Today's uh, JPL's atelier, it's a multidisciplinary design studio where we tackle some of our most complex problems. My co-founders and I work really hard to create an environment where we can uh, mature new concepts, infuse new technologies, and bring as many innovative methods as we can to improve the communications between ourselves, um, to help each other push in the limits of how we think, and most importantly, to have fun. Atelier has been very successful. In the last two years, we've tackled eight main challenges, and we were able, with a great team, to make it happen in a way that, with very, very thorough engineering analysis, we were able to very quickly produce highly detailed designs that we can 3D print today. But as I said, life gets complicated, and often embracing new technologies or new methods, it's part of the business. Uh, 3D printing, or additive manufacturing, as we engineers uh, like to call it, it's one of those fields that is opening up the path for innovation. In 3D printing today, you can pretty much play with any design you want. Uh, you can use different materials and combine different techniques. And complexity, any complexity, is becoming more or less, uh, more and more a commodity. A couple years ago, uh, my team and I had a challenge. Could we design a system capable of enabling large surfaces in space, uh, adapt to any shape, and be able to be built in space. So we used the atelier approach to tackle the problem, and soon two questions arose. Could we make this simpler? <laughs> and two, could we make the system multifunctional? So after some work, we realized that perhaps textiles might be the path to follow, and 3D printing the technology to simplify the process. And here's the result a multifunctional 3D printed metal fabric capable of performing four different functions. First of all, it can, it can fold in any way and therefore adapt to pretty much any shape. 
Second, it can hold up tension. If you stretch it, it will resist. Third, it reflects the light, as you can see here in the video. And fourth, on the back of it, it actually works as a thermal radiator, as an energy radiator. And this is as it comes from a 3D printer. So using 3D printing allow us to make something impossible possible, but at the same time open up a path for us to be even more innovative. So let me introduce you to space 4D printing. Nowadays, in the, in the aerospace business, there is a, a new trend, CubeSats. These are a small spacecraft you can hold with your hand, and uh, they're used by universities to perform different functions in the space at a reduced cost. These little vessels have everything you want, propulsion systems, uh, attitude control, solar panels, uh, imaging sensors, anything. Within that context, I started leading a technology development effort at JPL a year and a half ago to aim towards a new type of architecture for a small spacecraft, and we call it the 4D printed spacecraft. And here's the deal. A big percentage of all the structural mass of any mechanical system that goes into a space is there because it has to uh, withstand the forces during launch. You know, all the shaking in the rocket, we have to do something with it, right? Uh, but once the system is in the space, we don't need that material anymore. Hence, we start asking ourselves, could we do something else with it? Maybe we can help transferring power. Maybe we can do, uh, um, um, help the thermal. Maybe we can do science with it. So our first attempt to design a 4D printed spacecraft was done in a 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters cube. We designed and built four modules that will perform four different functions capable of being in pretty much any spacecraft you can see today. So first, we designed a power module that integrates uh, cables, wires, connections, all in one metal component that also serves as a structural component. We also 3D printed and tested uh, springs capable of deploying components once the system is in space. Third, we designed and, and, and printed passive thermal management systems capable of also performing as, as a structural component. So a honeycomb, 3D printed honeycomb panel that you can see in black in the image, or a dual material, dual metal panel capable of reflecting the light, the video, on one direction while it's, it acts as a thermal radiator on the other direction. And of course, we build and optimize a general structure that will hold everything together. And this was our first generation. But then the question came again. Could we do more with less? Could we go beyond? And yes, we could. And here's the second generation. We integrated all those four functions into one single component. And this is as it comes from the 3D printer. What is truly dramatic here is that this could make traditional assembly design obsolete. We foresee a future where we can potentially 3D print the whole spacecraft this way. But for now, during these first pioneering steps, we're just trying to make sure that everything performs well, that everything is optimized and could do more than one function. But then again, could we go beyond? Could we go further? And we can, and we did. And during our third generation, uh, here's a component of it, we, don't, we were able to get a bigger size, more complex, and integrate all those four functions, and even, even more functions, such as radiation shielding. The question is, if we keep uh, going forward, yes, we will. We will uh, at JPL, and we will as a species, because humans will always be inventing new things. There are plenty of challenges for you and me to tackle out there. The key is that we inspire and we encourage each other, especially young generations, to make them think like that artist in the, in the, in the atelier. Uh, create a joint vision with your team. Embrace new perspectives and new technologies. Make sure that you enjoy the journey and the suffering of developing something new, because I guarantee you there's a lot of suffering. <laughs> and also, dare yourself to push the limits, to go beyond. And nurture yourself and your team, but also future generations. Because impossible things could be possible in space and on Earth. As long as we keep connecting things that were not connected before, and as long as we keep our feet on the ground and our head in the stars. Thank you very much.